We spend our days listening to our inner dialogue. It makes us react in certain ways. It makes us behave in certain ways. It makes us think and feel in certain ways. And sometimes this pesky inner dialogue makes us doubt ourselves in certain situations. Now, a lot of the negative self-talk actually stems from our beliefs, our defining moments, our traumas in our life. So if you are ready to become aware of your inner critic and how to quieten the noise so you can smash the goals you've been dreaming of, then watch this video till the end. Hey, I'm Becky Hayden, mindset and business coach helping female entrepreneurs to tune up their mindset captivate their ideal clients online and create magic with their social media. Now make sure you hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate you being here. Now some of our defining moments can actually be quite positive and influence our choices in ways that really empower us to move forwards in our life. However, some events are going to be negative to us because it taught us to be seen and not heard, that you will never make the money you desire, or that you maybe weren't good at something. These defining moments help to insert that inner critic into our thoughts, and the old beliefs that you are running with right now almost become part of your inner dialogue, whether you said it or whether someone else said it to you and you're taking it as truth. Now, these inner dialogue thoughts truly start to become the quality of your life because your thoughts create your feelings, create your actions, which in turn create your results. So if you're not getting the results you want right now, let's go back to the thoughts and see what's inside. Before we get into the juicy training, let's actually elaborate on what your inner critic is. Now, your inner critic likes to be safe at all times. It's actually part of your subconscious mind. And yes, that is the primal job of the subconscious mind to keep us safe. Now, this is great when we're running across a road and a bus is coming and we run back so we don't get run over. But it's not so great when you really want to achieve something in your life, when you really want to step out of your comfort zone in your business, and there's that pesky thought that keeps telling you that you're not good enough, that you're not capable of achieving this, that your business will never take off and it'll never happen for you that you're not lucky like the rest of them, that you won't lose the weight that you want. Ooh, let's just watch another four seasons on Netflix and I'll do it later. All of these thoughts are coming from your inner critic because they are trying to keep you safe. But I am here to tell you that the only person that can change your inner critic that's keeping you safe right now is you. So you ask, how can I stop listening to my inner critic and start living from my own thoughts and feelings? Let's go. Step number one is awareness. The first step to change is always awareness. And bringing awareness to your inner critic voice is going to be our first step. Now, when I work with my clients, a lot of them don't actually realize just how much their inner critic is running the show. So I want you to start writing down some of the things that you hear yourself say every single day. What are those most commonly voiced beliefs? What are you doing when they show up? What is it trying to keep you safe from? Now, being aware of your inner critic, you will actually already subconsciously start to break away from those thoughts. You will begin to see just how mean your inner critic is being for you and how you are no longer available to put up with it. By bringing the awareness, you are already creating the space for change. So this week, keep a notepad or keep notes on your phone for any time that pesky inner critic voice shows up. Remember, she's only or he's only trying to keep you safe. So really get them down and then we can move on to step number two. Step number 
to is to create your inner critic into a character. Now, this is possibly one of my all-time favorite techniques that I share with my clients, and now I'm sharing with you. When we create a character for our inner critic, we actually start to disassociate ourselves from the noise, from the voice, from that belief system that we no longer need to believe. Now, mine, she's called Tracy. I know exactly when she's showing up. I know exactly what she looks like, how she sounds, and what she's trying to keep me safe from. When we actually create our inner critic into a 3D character, it allows us to one, disassociate, but also see our thoughts from a bird's eye view. It helps me to really understand why she's saying it, what she's saying it for, and actually for me to be very logical with my answers. So your task for today is to create your inner critic into a character. Do they have a name? Do they have a physical appearance? Maybe it's a personification from a voice that you hear inside your head. Let's decide five adjectives that really describe your inner critic. Get to know and understand your inner critic because actually we never ever want to be horrible to our inner critic and that's where I see a lot of people go wrong. We want to nurture our inner critic, tell them, hey Tracy, it's safe. I know this feels scary right now, but we're gonna be fine. This moves you nicely on to number three, treating your inner critic like a child. Now when a child throws a tantrum, what are they really looking for? Attention. And what happens if you don't give that child, or adult, let's be honest, exactly what they want? They get louder, more determined, more demanding, more intrusive. So if your inner critic is kicking off and you continuously either ignore it or keep shouting at it, it's going to get louder and louder. So how can we start to really treat our inner critic like a child? I want you to try this simple technique. First of all, you're going to acknowledge that the thought is there. Oh, here we are, another negative thought. You're then, secondly, going to thank that thought for showing up. From there, you're going to switch that thought to a thought that serves you better. Now, it doesn't have to be unicorns, rainbows and fairies. It just needs to be a thought that serves you better in that situation. So each time you are now aware and you've made your inner critic a character, each time she or he starts to kick off about a certain thing, starts to tell you that you're not good enough, starts to tell you that this is never going to happen, you're going to acknowledge it, thank it, and change it to a belief that serves you better. Now, the more times you do this, the easier it becomes. The more times you do this, the quicker the subconscious mind will learn that you no longer listen to your inner critic. Remember, the brain learns best from repetition. So you will need to commit to this change because it will not be an overnight success. Keep doing this, keep listening in, changing the thoughts to serve you better, and you'll find within two to three weeks that you can really start to see the shifts. Now the last one today is a bit of a funny exercise, but it's something that really works. And that is to have an actual physical conversation with your inner critic. Now I wanna add a disclaimer here, make sure that you are alone in your house or you at least tell whoever is in the house that you're about to have a conversation with yourself. Now the first thing I want you to do is I want you to picture yourself standing right in front of you, about one meter away. And in your best, silly, stupid, whiny voice, I want you to speak out those pesky limiting beliefs. I'm not good enough. My business will never succeed. This is never gonna happen for me. You get the picture. 
Now I want you to switch positions and stand facing where you just were. See how those thoughts are diminishing you in the past and now and potentially in the future. And with everything you've got from the bottom of your stomach, I want you to tell that inner critic that you no longer accept that belief, that you are no longer here to listen to those old beliefs and that you are ready to step into this new higher self reality. Now, when you've finished telling your inner critic just how not true these beliefs are, you'll really see that energetic shift. It will feel this amazing emotional shift and almost you will start to see those limiting beliefs fade away. So I want you to remember that your thoughts create your feelings, create your actions, which in turn creates your results. So if you are currently not getting the results you want, it's probably because of the thoughts that you're having. And with these couple of tips to really understand your inner critic, to really understand why they are showing up, what they're trying to keep you safe from, you can move forward with your own voice, with your own inner knowing, and actually with a higher self-belief that is going to allow you to get your dreams. You are bigger than those pesky inner critic thoughts and it's time for you to hear your own inner knowing. Now, if you've enjoyed this video today, make sure you press subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I would actually also love to hear what your inner critic name is, so make sure you tell me below in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.